All right, so today we have the Rocat Vulcan TKL Compact Mechanical RGB Gaming Keyboard. And we happen to have the linear switches. And if you look at this diagram, the linear switches are approximately equal to a uh, red switch, okay? Um, so first, let's take a look at this keyboard. It's an absolutely, an absolutely gorgeous keyboard. Um, it's a Tesla of keyboards, I would say. It's just, you know, beautifully built. It's got this nice metal uh, aluminum base plate here, beautiful edging around it. Um, the switches are absolutely captivating and beautiful to look at, right? It's just absolutely stunning keyboard to, to look at. This volume knob, you know, really excellent construction. This turns the volume on and off. You have your, uh, media player controls, it's just everything about this keyboard just looks and feels premium. Now, what I would say is this though, at this price point, it's a little bit disappointing that you really only have a limited number of lighting effects. So for example, um, if you hit the FN key and the FX, you can change the lighting effects, but you know, you're really just changing the direction and the color of the lights. Mm, not that many options. We're going to look at some of the other keyboards I have and that, that come in at a much lower price point and you know you have much wider option for the lighting effects. But that's probably not why you're investing in this keyboard. You're investing in this keyboard because it just looks like a really great keyboard, right? Now let's talk a little bit about the functionality. So this keyboard, like um, like this keyboard here, this is an Ajaz K870. Um, you have a very similar layout, right? So you can see uh, this keyboard, both keyboards have a full navigation key, navigation cluster here, dedicated up down arrow keys, a dedicated row of FN keys, and then a volume switch here. And in this case, we have a volume knob. But there's big differences here. Obviously, this keyboard much smaller, much lighter in terms of its thickness because this one is not wireless, whereas this Ajaz K870 uh, is a wireless capable keyboard. But of course, you can also plug it in. Um, and of course, even though this K870 comes in at a lower price point, um, it has, in my opinion, better lighting effects. Right? We'll take a look at it when we listen to the different uh, the different types of keys, and and uh, so you get an idea of how the keyboards sound. Okay. Now, the other big difference, in my opinion, you know, depending on what you're using this keyboard for, is that while I really like this Rocat Vulcan, it's not designed for productivity and typing. The reason I say that is really simple, okay? So if you look at this keyboard in the profile, right, you can see that there's a curvature along this surface, okay? And that's because of the curvature of your hands when you're typing, okay? Now, if you look at this keyboard, the Rocat, you can see there's no curvature. It's just a flat plane, okay? So if you're using this, you know, after a couple days, you start to feel weird, like you're kind of reaching your hand in, in weird angles. Um, and that is in fact, because these keys are not positioned the way that your hands are probably used to um, hitting keys on a keyboard where they're a little bit angled. So, you know, as you reach, especially for the further keys, right? Um, that angle helps you activate those keys easier. So on this keyboard, it's very subtle. You won't notice it right away. Um, I think, but, um, once you've used it a couple of days, you'll start to actually feel it because there is a very subtle difference in how far you have to reach your fingers to activate the key. Okay. So this keyboard, you know, I think it's great if you're doing a limited amount of typing. So for example, of course, obviously this game, this keyboard is targeted toward gamers. You can see it has a game mode here. And obviously, definitely, if you're playing, primarily playing games on it, it's not gonna be an issue at all. Um, whereas if you're doing a lot of heavy typing and productivity work, programming, document processing, this keyboard is probably not the one you're going to want to go for, okay? So with that said, Let's give it a listen. Again, these are red switches. Um, I have another keyboard here with a different type of red switch that we'll listen to. Uh, this keyboard here, this Ajaz K870 is a brown switch. And then I have another Ajaz here, K680, which is a blue switch. So you can listen to all the different types of switches that we have um, and see which one works for you, okay? So yeah, let's, let's get this kicked off with our uh, Rocat here. Again, this is what they call the linear switch, but I think it's a red switch. Okay.
Okay, so it sounds pretty good. I do notice that there's a bit of hollowness when you bottom out. Um, I think, generally speaking, all of the keyboards that I've used with uh, this metallic uh, bass plate always tend to have that, met that metallic hollow sound when you bottom out. Um, so yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty good. It's uh, great for office use because it's not too loud. Um, and uh, I think uh, the only problem with it from uh, daily use and productivity perspective is the it's not really designed for that, right? Um, but uh, great keyboard, okay? Now, just for your reference, if you're thinking about the linear or the tactile, I don't have the tactile version to show you, unfortunately, but these are red switches. I'm gonna show you a different red switch so that you can get a sense of how it sounds compared to other red switches. This is a Skyloon SK61, uh, another keyboard with red switches, okay? Give you an idea of what it sounds like. Okay, uh, let's reset our typing test. So even though these are both red switches, of course, um, this is a much louder red switch. Um, and of course, if you look at the design of this keyboard versus the design of this keyboard, what's nice about this is because you get this flat plane, you know, you're not going to get a lot of dust and crumbs in between and they're going to be easier to clean. Um, this keyboard, on the other hand, you know, once you get the grime in there, you have to pull the keys out to clean it. All right. Now, let's listen to a brown switch. So red switches are generally pretty silent. This one is a K870 um, with brown switches. And again, the K870, you know, very similar in terms of the overall layout and the size. I think it comes in at a better price and better feature set overall because it's wireless, it has the Bluetooth, and it also has a lot more lighting capabilities if that's what you're going for. Um, but yeah, let's give it a listen, okay? Let's reset. Okay, so the brown switches, um, not too bad. Brown switches and red switches, I think, are both great if you're using it in an office environment. Uh, personally, I think if you're doing a lot of programming or word processing, this is the keyboard to get, okay? Um, general purpose keyboard, it's cheaper, it can be wireless, um, better lighting effects, um, and it just feels better for typing, okay? Now, we have one final keyboard, just to give you an idea. You know, in terms of if you're considering the type of switch, this one is a also an HS wireless, but this is a blue switch, and you're really going to uh, really going to hear the difference with the blue switch. Okay. Okay. So the blue switch, obviously, much much louder, um, and. <laughs> And uh, don't get the blue switches if you're going to be working in an office environment because your coworkers are going to really detest you, okay? Um, but uh, yeah, this Rocad Vulcan keyboard is a just a really, really sexy keyboard, right? So if you're looking for the aesthetics, there's no question this is one of the, you know, this is one of the best looking keyboards I've personally laid eyes on. Um, the switches feel great and you know it's just a really nice piece of hardware to have on your desktop um, even though it has less lighting options i don't mind the lighting looks very good um, but i would say that the you know because of the lack of the curvature on the keys it's suboptimal for daily use from a productivity perspective right uh, so that's definitely something to consider you know if you're doing a lot of word processing or programming is uh, this keyboard may not be the right one for you, okay?